Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be decorating one of these hats. So this one is my forest sorcerer one, but I want to make a dark arts one. Something a little bit more edgy, you know what I mean? So we're going to take the hat that we made in the last video. And if you haven't seen that already, there will be a link to that in the description below and a card up here somewhere on the screen in case you want to follow along and make your own. And I've already made a wand, which I would like it to go as a set with this hat. So if we take a look at the wand, you can see it's got a skull on it. It's got all these swirly, smoky type waves coming out of it. Uh, lots of silvers, lots of greens, and I would like to incorporate that into today's hat. So let's get started. So for the embellishments on this hat, we're going to be using this. And this is foam clay, which I just bought from eBay. And it's really, really good. So I did buy some molds off the internet, off eBay as well, which were like these little skull molds, which are really, really cool. But I also wanted to have a go at making my own. So I had some like old bits of sort of skull jewelry and stuff, little tiny skulls, and I wanted to make my own mold. I wouldn't advise doing it the way I've done it. So I made this silicone mold out of, you know, like silicone window sealer that you can get and it smelt so bad. So I put it in an old Tupperware and then I just pressed in a couple of the items that I wanted to make a mold of. And it worked really well. I had to leave it outside because it stunk to high heaven and it was stinking the house out. And I had to leave it out for a couple of days, but it worked pretty well. I'll show you the results in a minute. So these are the foam clay skulls that we got from the mold I bought off eBay and they've come out really, really nice. And then these little ones are the ones that I made. I don't know if you can see the detail on that. They've actually come out really good, all things considered, but I would advise buying a proper silicone molding kit. It's just, this is what I had to hand and I really wanted to have a go at it. So we've got this foam clay. I've just kept some spare old stuff in a tub and it has kept really well. It's been there for a good few weeks and it's still real good. So as you can see, it's really stringy and you might need a little bit of water sometimes, but when you're using molds, generally I find you can just push it straight in there. Make sure you are pushing it right in so that it fills every single bit of the mold. And foam clay is amazing to work with. This isn't the only thing we're going to be using the foam clay for. We are going to be using it for all the smoky swirls on the hat as well. But I just wanted to show you how you can use foam clay with the molds and it works really, really well. And then when it dries, it is just like actual EVA foam. So it is perfect. So now I'm just going to have a little look at where I might want these foam skulls and try and get them into the positions. I'm going to mark it with a piece of chalk because everything has been painted black. I painted this hat black with gesso. So gesso is a good primer, but I find it works better on warbler than foam. And I found this out the hard way. I found it out after I had actually primed these hats, but it works pretty well. But I've been doing some tests and I will show those in a separate video which primer works best for EVA foam and also which top coat because it can be quite difficult especially with working with foam that is this flexible so you would not believe the amount of tests I have had to do to try and figure this out and what is the most surprising thing is that the best coat I have found as a primer is one of these two varnishes so either the gloss varnish or the matte varnish. And I know it sounds crazy. I tried Mod Podge, I tried Gesso, I tried PVA glue. And yeah, you want to go with one of these varnishes. So I picked these up from the range and they are acrylic varnishes. And because I'm putting acrylic paint over the top, it kind of makes sense really, doesn't it? But they were the last things I thought to try. And it's because they work so well as a top coat. So for your primer, I would always go when you're using a foam like this, for a matte or a gloss acrylic varnish. What we're going to do now is just mark out where we're going to want these embellishments to be placed on the hat. And I'm just going to use a bit of chalk because it's black. It just makes it easier for me to know where I actually want things to go. So we're going to do this with all the skulls that I've got. So it's going to be two large skulls and three small skulls. So I've been going off camera with the hat to my mirror and just placing them where I think I might want them to be and drawing around them as best I can. I'm going to trim off any excess foam clay from around the edges. And now it's time to grab our old friend Thixofix. So Alpha Thixofix is my choice of contact glue. It is perfect for EVA foam and you just need to spread a small thin layer on both the area that you're going to be gluing to and also the item that you're going to be using to glue to your hat. So in my case, these fiddly little skulls, which is going to get my fingers covered in glue. This happens all the time, but it'll be worth it. 
And then once we've done that, we just wait 10 minutes or so until the glue is dry to where it's not goopy, but it is so you can't stick it to your fingers like this. But to where it's not goopy anymore, but it's still slightly sticky to the touch. And once it is dry, you can start putting it onto your hat. So let's do that now. So we're just going to place it over the area where we put the glue on the hat and push it down. Hold it in place for a bit. Keep pushing all around the edges and it should be stuck fast. And we're going to do that with each one of the skulls. And once they're on there and they're stuck good, it's now time for the fun bit. So we're going to use the foam modeling clay and we are going to make ourselves some smoky swirls. So you're going to want some water for this to make sure that it adheres to the hat itself. So I've just got a piece of foam clay and then started placing it where I want it on the hat. So we're just going to push it in as much as we can. And then I'm just using a bit of water to push down all the edges so that it's smoothed into the hat, so that it definitely bonded with it. And like I said before, this foam clay is so good. And this will take some time and it'll take some getting used to, but it can be really, really fun. And it will try and wiggle around and move around quite a bit. So just keep pushing it into the hat and using water as you need. I'm quite happy with that bit. So let's make another swirl. And we're gonna start this one coming off of the other one. And I want it sort of curving kind of around the skulls, but I don't want it smoothed into them, if that makes sense. We just want to look like the smoke is sort of coming around the skulls. And we're just going to keep going and make a load of these. All right, let's make another one. Starting from the base this time. And we're just going to work around. And the same thing again, just pushing down the edges with water to make sure that it's bonding with the hat itself. You can always pull off any excess if you feel like you've put too much on. It's really handy stuff, this foam clay. And let's make some going in the other direction as well. Over and around. And I want some going up to the peak as well, I think. I always call the tip of the hat the peak. I'm not sure why. I guess it's like the peak of a mountain, I suppose, like the top of the mountain. I'm not sure. But yeah, we want to work all the way as much as we can towards the tip of the hat. So that there's quite a bit of detail up near the top as well. It's looking a bit bare to me, so I'm going to add a few more waves here and there. And then I'm going to go back over some areas that I've done and just make sure that it is all blended in. It's coming together now, so yeah, I think we just need a few more bits of smoke because I don't want to go too overboard. I just want it to look like a nice little like embellishment. I don't want it all over the hat on this one. With the Forest Sorcerer, I did put leaves kind of all around the hat, but with this one, I want it kind of just near the front and going up around the side. There we go. Yeah, I think that'll be high enough. So I'm just gonna let that dry now and it should take about 24 hours. Sometimes it doesn't take quite that long, but it is best to wait until it is fully dried and then we can start painting. Okay, it's the next day and it is dry. So we can start painting now. Just hold it up so you can see how it looks when it dries. So it looks real messy at the moment, but that is just what it looks like when it is dry. So I'm going to use green acrylic paint and the green stuff I'm using is actually just from Home Bargains, a cheap acrylic paint. And then the silver I'm going to be using for the detail is actually from the range and it's a really nice silver. So first let's squirt out a load of green and I'm going to be using a sponge for this. So I'm just going to cut off some sponge because I find it just gives a nicer texture. I don't want to see brush strokes all over the hat. So I just prefer to use a piece of sponge. So I just cut off a bit of that and then I can dip it into the paint and get started. So with the sponge, I'm just kind of dabbing it on. Just dab it on all over the whole hat. And you can see it gives a really nice texture and it's just so much better, like I said, than having brush strokes all over the place. So when it came to painting around the decorative area, I did start off with this little wedge sponge on a stick thing that I got in a multi-pack of paintbrushes because I was trying to be really delicate and careful. So then I just stopped caring so much and started going back to my regular sponge and just covering all the areas up to the decorative bit and not worrying too much if it went over the edges because we're going to be painting that with black gesso anyway shortly. 
So once that's done, I'm going to wait for the acrylic paint to dry a bit. And then I'm going to go over the details with some black ghetto. And I got this from eBay. I get most of my stuff from eBay. Amazon's really good as well. Amazon's probably better, but they charge a lot for postage. So, and I don't have Amazon Prime. So I'm going to use this type of a brush and I'm going to dip it in and then get started. I'd also like to go a little bit over the edges of this because I'd like there to be a dark shadow around the smoky waves as well. So we're just going to go around the whole thing, applying the gesso, and you can see how much it's popping against the green now. It's looking real good. Last couple bits. And there we go. We can wait for that to dry. Okay, so now that the black is dry and is looking pretty awesome, it's time to put some silver on. So as I showed you earlier, this silver paint is from the range. I'm going to be using some white for some highlights later. I've got two different types of white. The first one is an acrylic paint from Home Bargains and they have run out and I don't have much left. So I've had to buy a more expensive one from the range. Boo! But I'm sure it'll work just as well. I'm just really used to the stuff from Home Bargains and it is pretty quality, even though it's cheap. So the sponge is just what we're going to be using for the white paint later on. But for now, we're going to be just using some brushes and we're going to use different thicknesses for different areas of the embellishment, basically. So a thinner brush for the thinner stuff and then a fatter brush for, obviously, the bigger areas of detail. So this is going to be dry brushing. So basically, you want a very, very small amount of paint on your brush, like the tiniest amount. So wipe most of the paint off it and then be very gentle and just go over the areas that you want to dry brush. And then you just sort of build it up over time. But on areas like the skulls and some of the little details that might be left in the smoke when you're dry brushing, it will actually sort of sweep over some of the areas. You'll see on the larger skull now that because you're dry brushing, you'll actually keep a lot of the detail of the skull. So it'll still show some of the black from underneath and give it that nice shading without you actually having to go in and shade it. If that makes sense, dry brushing is just a fantastic technique. Uh, we learned this from a gentleman where I buy my model making stuff from a little model shop. And now once it's complete, we want to go back over the top of the most raised sections of the decorative bit and then add more silver to those bits so that they really pop. And we're going to do that to the whole thing. And now I'm taking a really small, thin brush and I'm going to go around the outline of the silver bits with black because I want to make sure it's quite a defined edge and it looks like there is a shadow between the green and the silver. So I'm going to go around the whole thing with this tiny brush and fill all those areas in. Just to give it that bit more definition, you know? And there we go. That's that bit done. And now for my favourite bit. So my favourite bit is highlighting and shading. I'm going to use a different type of textured sponge for this one. So it's a less dense foam. So we're going to get some white paint. We are going to dab our sponge in it. We're going to go over all the raised bits of the hat and we are just going to highlight that in white. So we're just highlighting the bits that are sticking out. So every area that is slightly raised is going to get a bit of a blast with this sponge and you're just going to dab it on. So just keep doing this, add more paint as you need. And like I said, this is my most enjoyable part of the process. I think it's because it really makes the details on the hat pop a lot more. And then I do like to go around the rim and do the same thing as well. And you can just see how much of a difference it makes. And once you're happy with the amount of white that you've put on, we're going to cut ourselves off a new piece of foam and we're going to use some green paint. And we're going to go around the edges of the white bits mainly that you've just put on and just sort of blend it into the original green that's underneath by using a sponge once again just to dab around because you don't want the white to look too harsh so we're mainly going around like i said the edges of the white bits that we just did you may want to actually go over them as well just with a couple of light dabs of the sponge so before I finished with all of the green, I decided I think now is probably about time to start with a bit of shading and then we can sort of blend the two areas together with the green. So we are going to grab some black paint. So using either a sponge or a brush. So a sponge for the larger indented areas and we're just going to dab a load of black into the areas that we want to look darker. We want this hat to look really quite weathered so that it has been worn, you know. 
So yeah, you can start with a sponge and dab your black into the areas. And in the areas which are a little bit more of a tight crease, you can use a brush to start off with. Go in there with your brush with some black on it. And then you can use a sponge then to blend those black edges out so it doesn't look so harsh. And dab it in, smush it out a bit. And you just want to keep going around the hat doing this same thing the whole way. So it looks extremely harsh when you first put that black line on there. But when you get a little bit of black onto your sponge and then you just start blending it in, it'll start coming together. And once you're happy with that, you want to get some green again and pop the green on your sponge and then blend the areas in like what you did with the white. So going around all the areas that you think look a bit too harsh and then dab them with the sponge and try and blend the two areas together. So the black into the greens, the greens into the whites. If there's any black close to the whites, you want to blend those two areas together as well. So we're just going to go around the whole hat doing this. I feel like the bit around the brim is a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to go around that with green as well. And you can see it's starting to blend together now so that it's still nicely shaded and looking weathered, but the black and the whites don't look too harsh. Then you can get a smaller piece of sponge and use a tweezers. And then we're going to go inside the more intricate bits of the embellishment just to make it a bit easier so that I don't go over onto the silver and the black. If you do go over onto the silver and the black, don't worry, you can just touch that back up again. So now I'm taking a really small brush and I'm going to go into those little areas and just use a brush to blend it a little bit more as well. I still feel like that needs more green, so let's do a bit more of that. And you can see that the areas are blended in, so the black isn't looking too harsh, the white isn't looking too harsh, but the hat has got a nice weathered look to it. And that's what we want. You don't want it to look too sort of, you know, new and flashy. You want it to look like it has been worn. And there we go. Shading and highlighting all done. Okay, so initially I wanted the hat to have a bit of a shine on it. So I went in with uh, like an acrylic gloss varnish and I varnished the whole hat, okay? It wasn't until afterwards that I realised I didn't like it being that shiny. And so what I did was I went over it with some anti-shine spray that I got for miniature models. So yeah, I was a bit gutted that I had to do that, but uh, you live and you learn, don't you? And so the final thing I want to do on this hat is sew some thread up the seam line at the back to make it look like that's where it's been sewn. So I've got this nice sort of shimmery silver wool, which I was using to try and knit some sort of chain mail. And I thought this might be ideal for it. And then I've got these needles, which have a pretty decently sized hole. So I think they should be okay. And they're still sort of skinny enough to poke through the hat and not leave too much of a hole, if you know what I mean. So we're gonna get this threaded through the needle and we're gonna make a start on stitching this up. So I want it to be in like a crisscross pattern as it goes up the hat. So I'm not bothered about it looking too tidy or too perfect because I want it to look hand sewn like it was authentic, you know? So it's going to be a bit tough when I get up to the tip because of all of the creases and stuff and curves and things I've got up there. So yeah, it's going to be a little difficult, but uh, I think it'll be worth it in the end. So now that we've done the thread, the whole hat is finished and it's time to roll those glamour shots. <laughs> 